Hello, this is not a hymn video. Um, I just felt like this is something that I should do. Um, so yesterday, I did a hymn video about the Book of Mormon. And I said that it's the word of God, that it's true, that it's necessary. And I also said that it verifies and clarifies the things that are in the Bible. Um, so I'm going to share an example of that. Um, so I'm going to start in Mark 10 with the story of the rich man who approaches Jesus. And then we're going to hop over to Luke 16 um, to the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And then we're going to hop over to Messiah 4. Um, and it's basically a king giving a sermon to his people. And he's talking about riches and how to manage them and um, help the poor. And so that's going to be Mosiah 4, 19 through 27. Um, for the sake of brevity, I won't read all of these, but um, I'll try to summarize them. So in Mark 10, 17 through 22, a rich man goes to Jesus and says, how can I gain eternal life? And Jesus basically says, follow the commandments. Okay. And he's like, okay, I do all that. And then he's like, okay, there's one more thing. I need you to give up all the riches that you have and follow me um make that sacrifice and follow me and you'll have riches in heaven and the rich man couldn't do it he was sad he's like okay well you're obviously asking an impossible thing and he leaves um and jesus said that in love um and then jesus looks to the people around him and says how hard is it for a rich man to get into heaven he's basically saying it's basically impossible for a rich man to get into heaven um and they're shocked by this they're like what what on earth like then how can anyone be saved um and he looks upon them and says with men it is impossible but not with god for with god all things are possible um so people often interpret that story to mean that um it's bad to be rich that's it's like a very shallow interpretation it's bad to be rich rich people cannot get into heaven and then, um, in Luke 16, this idea is kind of expanded on. So it has a rich man in this story, a rich man who's doing very, very well. And there's a beggar named Lazarus outside of his gate. And um, this guy's having a party going on, and Lazarus is just begging for breadcrumbs. And he isn't given any. And he is attacked by dogs. He dies. And then, later on, the rich man dies. And... So Lazarus is being taken into heaven, and then the rich man is in hell. And he looks up and he's like, "Hey, Lazarus, could you dip your water? Do, could you dip your finger in some water and put it on my tongue so I can have like just a moment of relief?" And that request is basically denied. He's basically said, "Well, you had your season of joy and whatnot when you were alive, and you um, you misused your riches, and so now you're in hell." Lazarus, he suffered his entire life, and now he's coming to heaven. Um, and then, so what happened here is Mark 10, it brings up the idea of riches and rich people and their place in, um, like when they're judged. And then Luke 16 kind of gives it some depth with this parable and kind of makes the point that, um, it's more the love of riches that is a problem more so than the riches themselves, like being rich. And then, um, in Mosiah 4, this is in the Book of Mormon, um, he, I'll just go through it. So he starts off saying that we are all beggars. We all rely on God for everything that we have. And then he, um, he addresses the rich, he addresses the poor, and then he tells all of us how we can manage our riches. So starting in uh, Mosiah 4, 19. For behold, are we not, are we not all beggars? Do we not all depend on the same being, even God, for all the substance which we have, for both food and raiment, for gold and for silver, and for all the riches which we have of every kind? And behold, even at this time ye have been calling on his name and begging for a remission of your sins. And has he suffered that ye have begged in vain? Nay, he has poured out his spirit upon you, and has caused that your hearts should be filled with joy, and has caused that your mouths should be stopped, that ye could not find utterance. So exceedingly great was your joy." And now, if God, who has created you, on whom you are dependent for your lives and for all that ye have and are, doth grant unto you whatsoever thing ye ask, whatsoever ye ask that is right, in faith, believing that ye shall receive, O oh, then, how ye ought to impart of the substance that ye have one to another. So, if God gives you everything um, that you want, um, that you have, 
then you should be just as willing to give those things to other people. And if he judge the man who putteth up his petition to you for your substance that he perish not, and condemn him, how much more just will be your condemnation for withholding your substance, which doth not belong to you but, but, but to God, to whom also your life belongeth? And yet, he put up no and yet ye put up no petition, nor repent of the thing which thou hast done. And so in 23, he mentions the rich. Um, I say unto you, woe be unto that man, for his substance shall perish with him. And now I say these things unto those who are rich, as pertaining to the things of this world. So those things he just said pertain to those who are rich um, as to the things of the world. So people who have a lot of money. Um, you know, we come into the world with nothing, we will leave with nothing. And people who love their riches more than their fellow men are condemned. Um, they had the means to share, just like the rich man in the story of Lazarus, but they didn't. And um, that brings condemnation. But this is the interesting thing. It doesn't just condemn the rich. In 24, it condemns the poor. This is interesting. Okay. And again, I say unto the poor, ye who have not and yet have sufficient that ye remain from day to day, meaning those who are alive, making it by just on pennies, you know, but they're alive. Um, I mean, all you who deny the beggar because ye have not, I would that ye say in your hearts that I give not because I have not, but if I had, I would give. So he's saying that um, those who don't have the means to share, um, if they deny the beggar, it's because um, they can't, not because they don't want to. And then it clarifies here. And now, if ye say this in your hearts, ye remain guiltless, otherwise ye are condemned. And your condemnation is just, for ye covet that which ye have not received. So this is interesting. He's saying that the love of riches is what condemns you. If you're rich, and you love your riches so much that you won't give them up, you're condemned. If you're poor, and you hate the rich, or um, you desire riches over... Um, the well-being of your fellow man, then you're also condemned because it's the love of riches at the core of both of those issues, regardless of how much you have. All of it comes from God. Okay, 26. And now, for the sake of these things which I have spoken unto you, that is, for the sake of retaining a remission of your sins from day to day, that ye may walk guiltless before God, I would that ye should impart of your substance to the poor, every man according to that which he hath, such as feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, feeding the sick, and administering to their relief, both spiritually and temporally, according to their wants. Okay, so he's saying, um, in order for you to be in good standing with God, give what you have to those who are in need. But this is interesting. I love this. Okay, 27. And see that all these things are done in wisdom and order. For it is not requisite that a man should run faster than he has strength. And again, it is expedient that he should be diligent, that thereby he might win the prize. Therefore, all things must be done in order. So this sounds a lot like the way Paul talks, um, where he talks about winning the prize and whatnot. And I love this so much because he also talks about running. Um, I forgot where it was. He talked about sport, and I think he was talking. Anyway, um, it is not requisite that a man should run faster than he has strength, all things are to be done in wisdom and order. Meaning, um, if you have a certain amount of money, you shouldn't just give your life savings to some random person on the street because that wouldn't be wise. It wouldn't be orderly. If you want to share and help as many people as you can, you need to be organized. Um, and you should not run faster than you have the strength to do. Give what you can, and that is acceptable. Um, so, that, so this is... A perfect example of what I was talking about. The Book of Mormon verifies and clarifies um, the things in the Bible. So in Mark 10, it brings up the whole concept of like riches and our relation to them. And then in Luke 16, it kind of adds a depth to it and says, okay, the issue more is the love of riches. And then in the Book of Mormon, it brings that same thing up and it explains the nature of riches, where we get them, and why we should not value them as much. And it condemns the rich who love, but then it extends to the poor who love riches. And then it also says, not only should both of those um, not love riches, but when you give, as you should be doing, you should be doing it wisely um, and in a way that is healthy and smart. Anyway, um, I don't know if I'm doing this correctly, but... This is important to me, and I love it. And there's so many examples of things like that throughout um, the Book of Mormon. Um, okay, thank you.